Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Bucket Coding. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to regenerate blocks that were uh, destroyed in an explosion. Now, you guys already know that if someone actually, you know, breaks a block, you can uh, use a block break event and cancel the event to stop it from happening. Uh, but today, I'm going to actually show you how to regenerate blocks after they have been destroyed in an explosion. In order to do this, we're going to use the uh, Entity Explode event, which is called whenever an entity explodes. Uh, it could be a creeper, which is what we're going to use. It could also be TNT, or anything else that, ca that causes an explosion would uh, cause this event to be called, and then we can actually go ahead and regenerate the blocks. So let's go ahead and first write out the um, method. So this is uh, an event. And we're going to just call it uh, on entity explode. And this is an entity explode event. And we're going to call it E. Make sure to import everything. Now, what we're going to do inside of here is if you take a look at E dot, you'll notice the first thing that shows up is block list, which gives you a list of all of the blocks that were involved in the explosion. And obviously, since we want to deal with the blocks, that's what is important to us. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do an, a for loop for block B in e.blocklist. So we're going through all of the blocks that were involved. Make sure to import the bucket block and not the Minecraft block. So we're going through every block that was involved in the explosion. First thing that we need to do is say final block state state block state state is equal to not new. It's equal to b.get state. We need to save the state of the block so that we can use it again uh, a little bit later. The next line, this is optional, it depends on um, whether you would want to use it or not, uh, but if you go ahead and say set type to material dot air, what this will do is, um, it, this is going to uh, stop item drops from spawning. Spawning. So if you set this to be air, it's going to make all of the blocks air before the explosion actually happens, so that when they explode, uh, you know, nothing will actually drop. If you remove that line, then any block that explodes will drop its droppings like normal. Uh, so if you want to stop the item drops uh, from spawning, then you would set it to be air. If you want them to still show up, but you just want the regeneration, then you would remove that line. I'll leave the comments in there, so if you're looking at the code, uh, you can easily be able to tell. Uh, next, we're going to actually go ahead and put in the delay, because you want to have uh, a little bit of a delay before the... Um, before the block actually shows up. You don't really want it to be instantaneous or else uh, it could be a little bit confusing. And there is one important thing that you'll see in a second that we need to do. So we're going to go ahead and declare um, an int delay, which will set equal to 20. This is going to be in ticks, so right now the delay is one second. If you wanted to make it take 15 seconds, you would do 20 times 15, and then that would be for 15 seconds. Uh, but one important thing is any of the blocks that have to do with physics, uh, we need to actually do something a little bit special. So we're going to say if b.getType uh, or is equal to material.sand, not saddle, sand, or b.getType is equal to material.gravel. Because these are the two um, blocks that are actually involved with physics. So we need to make sure that we take care of these. And we're just going to go ahead and add one to the delay. So it's going to um, take one extra one tick or one twentieth of a second. And that's important for just letting, you know, the, the other blocks, like the block that's, you know, under it to generate first. Um... So that's, just don't worry about it, it is important though. Now we're going to actually go ahead and um, schedule the uh, delayed task. Um, I actually meant to do bucket.getServer.getScheduler. And then we're going to go ahead and schedule a sync delayed task. Plugin is this. We're going to go ahead, excuse me, and make a new runnable. 
with a public void run, and then the long is going, or the uh, the delay is going to be this delay. If you don't want to have a delay, you could set it equal to zero, but you still need to add one for the sand and gravel. That is important. So make sure that you do that. But otherwise, you're fine. Then we just need to call state dot update, and we're going to use the one that has true booleans, and we're going to give it true and false. So we needed to save that block state so that we could still have it because uh, you know we're setting this type to be air. Uh, so, you know, we, we need to save the state, and then we're updating the state so it'll actually, you know, revert to the state as it was before, and it won't be air anymore. So that's very important. And I believe that's all. Make sure you're registering your events, of course. And let's actually go ahead and export this and give it a try. So go ahead and start up the server. And as soon as that's ready, I am ready to join into the server. All right, we're good. So let's go ahead and join. And I got some creeper eggs, spawn eggs right here. So let's go ahead and spawn one. So I'm in survival mode so I can make the creeper angry. And, ooh, he exploded. And as you can see, one second later, the terrain regenerated itself. So let's go ahead and first I got to heal myself. And now let's go ahead and spawn one, get out of the way. Well, we gotta make him angry, but let's get out of the way. Come on. There we go. And as you can see, one second later, the terrain did reset itself, and there were no item drops because we did that uh, set the type to be air so that there were uh, no item drops. And let's come down here and make him explode. See if I can do it without dying. Alright, and then as you can see, even on the ice, it's still one second later immediately fix itself. You could, of course, make the delay, as I said, later if you wanted to take more than a second to come back. I suppose you would also need to be careful with if a player were to go into the explosion, they might get trapped in the explosion. I'm not completely sure, and I don't know if I can get in there fast enough to actually try it out, but uh, you would probably want to be careful with that. So that's all for this video. This was a requested video, so I wanted to do it, of course. Um, this is... Uh, uh, this is uh, automatically regenerating blocks that were destroyed in an explosion. You know how to do it if a block is broken. Out uh, if the block explodes, then you got to do something a little bit more special. Uh, you could also do, um, you know, rig up a little system where it'll actually regenerate the blocks one block at a time, and maybe have it generate a couple blocks a second. So it almost looks like the terrain is rebuilding itself, which could be pretty cool. Uh, as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, uh, click the like button, and I'll see you guys next time uh, with some more coding videos. Bye, guys.